Alright, buddies, let's go. Gigabyte Marines versus Fnatic. I'm not taking any break. I drank some water. I uh, listened to the stream. I'm uh, gonna do it live once again. Let's just take a look at the draft. Let's just head right into it. Gigabyte Marines just came off a crazy long ass game against Longzu and they're forced to play this game once again against Fnatic. You could say they're warmed up, you could say they're tired. Either way, it's quite crazy. Jana Tristana are the first bands. It looks like Gigabyte Marines are going to aim for the Zaya first pick here. Let's see if Fnatic are going to ban Rakan last here to make sure that the Zaya first pick is not that great and uh, Fnatic can line themselves up for the better AD pickup. Instead, Galio is out. I'm not sure if Jarvan ban is the correct ban to do against Gigabyte Marines. Let's be honest, like Gigabyte Marines don't give 10 shits about Jarvan. They couldn't give a flying, flying pig. You know, they don't care. They really, really don't care. And uh, they would much rather just play a Kane. You, I, like, I would ban the Kane off of Levi even. Like, I would just straight up ban Levi Kane and I would be happier in that scenario. So let's see now what Fnatic can pick with this Rakan. Tristana is out. Twitch is something that we saw a couple of times together with Rakan. Not too big of a fan. Uh, a big thing here with... Uh, with uh, with setting up the scenario for themselves. You know, the problem with the Janna ban for Gigabyte Marines is that the support that is the best support together with Zaya, or if let's say Gigabyte Marines first pick Rakan, it also puts them in a scenario where, you know, let's say the scenario Fnatic put themselves in is that they. If the enemy team picks Zaya, we pick Rakan. If they pick Rakan, we pick Zaya. And either way, they're going to be fine, right? Either way, they're going to be fine. And then picking second, the other role is going to be like beneficial for you. I'm just curious about what support they're going to go into Rakan. We've seen Morganas. We've seen uh, like I think Lulu could be fine too. I think Lulu like you could just pick it. But Lulu Zaya is a lame matchup. We just we just haven't seen this. And I'm curious to why. Like sure, they don't have any synergistic kind of capabilities together like sure she's just an AD carry and a little support right you don't have to synergize much more than that uh, to be useful do I have some marks on my nose it looks like it I don't know I'm just scratching my nose a lot okay so Fnatic leave their AD carry pick for a very late part of the game uh, or the pick and ban phase at least Gigabyte Marines are going for like the, the Lulu and the Zaya and the, and the Kane. Pretty standard picks for them. Syndra is something that Fnatic showed up, uh, showed with uh, a lot of times. That was banned in the game against um, Immortals. Then we saw Cassiopeia, and I felt like the Cassiopeia, sure, it was clutch and won the game for them, but I feel like Cassiopeia is not the greatest pick in the current meta. Rek'Sai is also something that uh, Brox has been playing a lot. Uh, he just uh, prefers it over the Gragas, it seems. And uh, Rek'Sai should be able to do quite fine into the game uh, in the skirmishes. Varus is ban number one. Let's see what other ADs that Gigabyte Marines might ban. I think Twitch is going to be their ban. Twitch is the one that uh, Reckless has played and uh, other teams have played together with Rakan. So it's a uh, very hard scaling bottom lane and uh, definitely has a lot of potential to carry a lot of games. Instead it was a NAR. Seems like they're very happy to play into Twitch here and uh, to be honest with the success rate of Twitch Twitch and Rakan in bot lane I think it's understandable. It's completely understandable. This is a bot lane that's going to get perma pushed in, right? It's going to get perma pushed in and uh, is going to run into those type of troubles. We have Talia and Kassadin uh, as bans against Sin for Syndra and then Fnatic are going to last pick top lane here. Let's see if uh, Soaz is willing to pick something like um, the Trundle. If he's willing to pick, pick the Trundle and play it and uh, pick it into a tank or what does he have in store for this Urgot? Because 100%, 100% they were prepared for this Urgot, right? They saw it in the previous game and I think Suha said, ah, I will just play this into this, you know? So I'm curious as to what he will show up with against the Urgot. Maybe a Jax. I think Jax could be good against it. I think Shen 
was fine against Urgot. Okay, and that's a Corky. We got this full all out like this um, kind of uh, AD carry composition. I guess Choga should be fine too, right? At least they have the Rakan this time around, so they have some engage to play around with, so Chogat is not that bad. But it would be quite hilarious if Fnatic lose this game uh, with Chogat in their hands. You see Soaz is kind of uh, hesitating here. No, I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. Like, Chogat is not as bad as it's been in other games here, because they do have a Rakan, they don't have a Rise in mid lane. So Gigabyte Marines, they have a kind of a strange composition. They are uh, pretty strong in the range, kind of... Um, part of the game they can clear waves uh, they lack engage so it's very important for them that they uh, get this ergot ahead and uh, play on the side lane to get a lot of pressure because i think uh, syndra can easily clear the waves that then that gigabyte marines can gather towards them so that's going to be a problem for gigabyte marines Let's see now as we head into it. Gigabyte Marines, they have a composition where they have a lot of strong lane matchups. They have uh, the Zaya Lulu against Rakan and Twitch. That is going to be a win for them. Corky into mid, Syndra. Syndra wins early and then Corky scales well into the lane. Kane loses early against Rek'Sai, but then he scales very well into the matchup. I think this could be a great game for uh, the Red Cane. What's it called? I don't care what it's called. The Red Cane. Everyone knows what the Red Cane is. Red Cane. And um, he can heal a shit ton. Like, he can heal so much. He can heal crazy amount of HP by just ulting the Cho'Gath. He can just Q the Cho'Gath as well. and He can heal him for crazy numbers. So he's going to hope that he gets the freaking Red uh, upgrade here, I would imagine. You know, the Shadow Assassin is not that terrible either, right? He can just aim to maybe snipe Reckless, which is going to be a key target, but that is a hard thing to do when Reckless is the one opening, you need to get to him, and if Reckless is positioning well, then it's going to be a difficult thing to do. The main thing here is that this enemy team is like a party for Twitch, you know, he loves playing against a team like this, full of squishy targets and not a lot of hard CC! Whoa! <laughs> what the hell? Holy moly! <laughs> Stamp on the ground. Jump, jump, jump. That was... <laughs> that was insane. He just killed the bush. And uh, Gigabyte Marines did something similar against Longzo in the level 1 scenario where they just played like this 3-2 scenario and... Holy! Whew. That worked! I am so happy that that worked. Gave Fnatic the first blood on the cane. Yeah, it's gonna give him that fast out and sensor and all of a sudden, you know, this Fnatic just straight up copied Longzu's strategy. Straight up like Longzu, what you're doing is great. And Gigabyte Marines, just because they played instantly against Longzu, they didn't have a time to adjust. Like, they played a fucking one-hour game. Like, what, what, do you think the main thing that went through their mind is like, ah, oh, the level 1 was pretty bad, like Longzu had a good level 1? That is not the thing that you take away from a game like that. So that is where the fact that Fnatic is playing Gigabyte Marines instantly after that match is a big deal. And uh, Fnatic, of course, they need to beat Gigabyte Marines twice, so they can't pull off this cheese the next time. Uh, we can see that uh, Fnatic are going to go into uh, a tiebreaker if they win this one. Going to go into tiebreaker if they win this one. Uh, I don't know how the system works or how the game time works or who is going to be tiebreaking against who. Uh, Levi is now in a position where uh, the map is split in half. He is happy to do so because he managed to get the camps on the enemy's top side. So he's completely happy with the situation. He's not afraid at all. He's going to be able to also heal up on the crab if he wants to. But it looks like he's going to head into base and not waste any time uh, pondering around with low HP. Which is also understandable, you know, like doing full top side clear into, into like doing 
topside clear, meaning raptor, red into golems, is something that costs a lot of HP. And the benefit here is that Roxa didn't take the enemy golems, and he did. So in theory, Levi is going to be one camp ahead here, and uh, he's going to have uh, a quick raptor spawn on his side, and he's going to be satisfied with the situation. Like by the time Levi is finished with the topside camps, he's going to walk towards his raptor camp, and he's going to uh, basically contest it and be fine. Okay. Well, turns out Rexa is going to go down to take uh, the golems anyway. So it turns out what I said with the advantages is not true. Hmm. Rexa is now at a base disadvantage, but uh, it's not like Levi has any super items with his base, right? He has a pink ward and. Eventually he's going to have to base anyway because right now Brox is stronger than him and he's more useful than him because he has uh, Those items Levi is warding up topside because he knows That uh, Rexa is gonna come up here because these camps are gonna spawn Levi takes him away and leaves one never mind Spots the Rexa so he just decides to take it away anyway and Now we're in a genuine situation where Levi is ahead Optimus with some trading in mid, Wars of Bloodlust is going to keep him healthy, he still has a potion, interesting that you see him playing with the Doran's Blade, quite aggressive, aggressive of him, usually we see corrupting potions, because that works with what you teleport, but uh, this time around it's a Doran's Blade, so he's an aggressive player. Can Archie even die here? It looks like it, no flash from the level 1, I completely forgot about that, you know I saw it, I checked, you know, when I asked myself if he can die here, and all of a sudden, you know, he just, he just gets killed straight up. Crazy stuff, crazy stuff. Very, very meaningful. Good timing for the kill. Uh, Choga is in a very happy position in the lane phase. He didn't need to push out. The wave is freezing uh, towards him. And right now, Archie is in a weird position where he needs to push out top, needs to take a risk, but Soaz is deciding to save his TP. So instead of TPing top and pressuring Archie to uh, take a risk here to push in the wave, they're instead just saving the TP and letting Broxa farm out his golems and uh, be happy with it. The main thing here is that I haven't seen TP being used for incredible things in a lot of these games and uh, maybe it's just a mistake to do so to allow him to push in because Broxa is coming from such a good angle. A uh, big difference here now though is that the flash is coming off cooldown now for Archie. Optimus has TP backed into mid lane and uh, it seems like Caps is unscathed so he... Caps did in fact get a good base so he's uh, happy with the situation that happened you know. He, uh, he controlled the TP situation up top very well. And now is the big problem with uh, Rek'Sai red side right? People are scared of this and uh, for, a, for a good reason because the red side ganks are insane for Rek'Sai. You know, he has so many angles to work with, right? If we take a look at, uh, you know, he can E over this wall. So he can come into all these angles. And he can get there. You know, he can get into this position from so many angles too, right? In this case, like, he went all the way around and into top side. And it turned into an issue, right? It turned into a big issue. Question was, question is, like, what did Levi do during all this time? So... His rules were taken away. Levi was in base. It Levi took Raptor's bottom side. Oh, this was the replay. This was the replay. Levi is in base, walking towards top side. He just wants to casually take his rules, but Broxa is ahead of the curve. It's hard for me to analyze the situation because of the replay, so I'm not too sure what to say about it. Archie on the Erga is um, getting the D. Levi is also quite inactive in this game, and I think uh, Rek'Sai is a jungler that matches up a lot better against uh, Kane than a lot of the other meta junglers. Question is if Zaya could get one shot here, I I'm not too sure. There's a heal on Zaya, but uh, I guess it's bad for Caps to use his mana. He just needs to save his mana. I think if he uses mana and uh, 
he would just lose so much pressure if he did. Quirky package is gonna come up in one minute. Let's see where that lands us. Bottom lane is actually in favor of uh, Rakan and uh, Twitch, surprisingly. I thought that uh, Zion Lulu would uh, definitely win this matchup, and uh, uh, it's hard to to judge. I feel like uh, you know it's like a patch note prediction because you know th the camera work is not really optimal to make judgments like on what is going on in bot lane or in in any specific lane that uh, the jungler isn't in. So sure, we can analyze top lane and talk about it a lot because there's a lot of camera work going on on this Urgot because this Urgot is hype. Main problem now is like if Rexa gets spotted uh, and Kane can take all this top side jungle, I don't know if it's worth it. Roxa would have to commit for the top tower then and uh, here we go, here we go. Archie's coming in now, the Q is zoning, Archie is doing some dancing uh, and uh, seems like the dancing was a bit... Uh, Premature baby. Kane spotted the Rek'Sai top side. Levi is instantly taking all these camps. So he's gonna get like a total of what is it, 200 gold here with all these camps. And uh, it's a big deal, you know, it's a, definitely a big deal. He could take more if he wanted to. And uh, it seems like Fnatic are just gonna equalize by taking the blue. They're not committing to any top side play. Chogat, uh, I think, is just pushing the wave now. I, I can't imagine a scenario where freezing would be good right now. I thought, uh, genuinely thought the Fnatic would commit for the play where they just hit the top tower. But uh, this delayed version of it is also completely fine, right? Because Urgot walking top now is going to be a danger. Uh, of course, it's a bit different now because Soaz doesn't have ultimate, but Caps is eating the fruit and maybe they can do this. But uh, it seems like Soaz just wants to base and uh, get his components for Righteous Glory, which is also respectable, right? I already finished Hurricane on Twitch and Ardent Sensor. So that first blood money is <laughs> it's paying off on, for Fnatic. Big time. They are super happy with that first blood gold. And um, it's it's crazy to think that uh, they already at 10 minute mark has, have Hurricane and Ardent Sensor. So they're going to dominate the lane even harder. If anything, Fnatic wants to commit heavily to create a play situation on bottom. Because if... Fnatic commit on bottom and keep playing around bottom and force a situation where Gigabyte Marines, if they base, they lose the turret, it's perfect. It's really, really perfect because the enemy team need to base for that Ardent Sensor to match in strength, but there's no possible way they do it because uh, Fnatic are already in bot lane. So it's important now that Boxer plays around it through mid lane into bottom. Nice chunk onto Corky that forces his package. Now the all in is coming in, Reckless gets rooted. Levi is in position as well. Jess is... Whoa, 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 whoa. What's happening? What's happening? Levi has no evolution. Ratatata is in the building. Whoa! Optimus is in the building. TP comes in. I want to take a look at who has priority and where. Corky is just straight up basing, losing mid-wave. The main thing here that we need to discuss is that fighting bottom is not good for Fnatic here. Right now, Corky needs to make a big decision. Is he going to lose his wave? So Fnatic should play with the fact that they have this wave going on for themselves. Big cross on display and just commit on the fact that they are hitting bottom tower or mid tower. Then Corky is going to use his TP into mid lane and then they can rotate into bottom while Corky is TPing in and clearing the wave. And all of a sudden you have a juicy scenario where you actually outnumber the enemy. But right now, Syndra and Rek'Sai show the mid lane and Corky is just straight up TPing bottom. And uh, it makes this play really, really terrible. They also don't know where Levi is, which makes it a lot worse. And here is a beautiful route from no way. It's going to root the key target. Starts off with a one for one. It's not too bad, but then, hmm. Let's we'll see what Fnatic can do with Caps. A lot of good play here from Corky. Caps no ultimate. Rockets. Oh, oh, the shield don't matter when you're coming into the executioner. The executioner, man. 
holy moly ergo with the ultimate doesn't matter because you know the shield doesn't do anything the chain cc let's do, see if it's enough caps mana is pretty low the feast comes out to finish the ergod whoa holy holy was the auto attack just cancelled by caps or did i see that wrong i wish we could see like keystone cooldowns on the right hand side and like the the buff durations and the buff numbers i think it would be really cool if we could see like an a tier if he has fervor stacks let's take a look at this again right so they're forcing a situation where corky can tp in and where they don't know where levi is in so the reason why this is so terrible and going one for one is so terrible is because Fnatic is so far ahead right they have the Arden sensor they have the hurricane they are super far ahead in terms of their power spikes and when you talk about their power spikes you know they they should be dominating this fight but they're getting outnumbered which is a big deal of course and Cork is going to be the first one into the fight so as TP's in uh, there's the root that kills Twitch the one for one so far but going one for one is not something that you should like be happy about in, in Fnatic scenario they're so far ahead and um, going one for one is really suboptimal uh, Boxer getting rooted in here and chunked and eaten two for one currently in this situation uh, a very good uh, flash earlier from Corky when he flashed and uh, Rek'Sai knocked him up but he was already in a different location holy moly that's adorable man one second sorry really I'm sorry pause the game guys hear how loud the sound is there's like some ventilator thing going on all right sorry that was my Amazon package. Let me let me try to remember what, what is going on here. Okay. So this was the replay. And then replay into so as a still in bot lane into righteous glory. Holy moly, this is looking gory. Lulu flashing now. Oof. Now this is a classic fanatic, you know, they're just going through bottom, like after Soas is in base, he just goes straight bottom and sets up this play. This was something that, you know, the first time I saw this, this was really inspirational for me because like Soas was one of the few top laners that actually just didn't go top and just went straight bottom and made a play like this too. And this is phenomenal, this is beautiful, this is old school fanatic, this is looking like something. This makes me very, very happy. Very, very happy, you know. And uh, if we take a look at the situation, it's quite perfect, you know, because the top wave is crashing in Ergo's side, and and Soaz has a lot of time to work with, right? And what Soaz would do otherwise would be like most top lane would just walk top side, maybe through mid lane, maybe just clear a pink ward, maybe to try to put a ward in enemy jungle. But Soaz goes all the way bottom and commits this play, and. Uh, uh, together with Rakan and his ultimate, it's an easy free kill pickup. So, oh, very well done here, very well done. Like, Fnatic are super dominant in this game. So has a super far ahead, and he finally has a team that is built around it. Like, Choga is very good with Rakan, and uh, Rek'Sai Red Side is perfect to set up a lot of ganks for this Choga. So, finally, we see, like, uh, real Soas in action, I feel. At least on uh, the real, a real Choga game, so to speak. Not the last times we saw it. Ocean Drake, really OP in lane phase, but uh, we're out of lane phase, so it uh, doesn't matter that much. 
you know, if you shoot the crab while he, he's eating your fruit, you stop him from eating your fruit. So Optimus is obviously he hates animals. Insane engage range from Jess's. Good stuff, good stuff. Fanatic are looking super, super good in this game. Super good. You know, if you're pushing in top top wave, you want to transition your pressure elsewhere. If the top wave is already pushed in without you being there, then you should go elsewhere and try to do something else because you have a lot of time to work with. And then you can use this to make a tempo swing and tempo advantage. And right there, you know, Fnatic of first tower, they go two kills. They caught the enemy off guard. They also were tempo uh, head and tempo. Like even in the case where the enemy team was aware of this and they ran away from the turret, right? It would still be a good scenario. It would be like a reverse lane swap, you know, and uh, uh, Fnatic would get first tower regardless of the scenario though. So it's uh, definitely very positive. And the bottom tower is so much more worth than the top tower when Rift Herald is open because what you want to do anyway is you want to put your bot lane top side and you want to play for that top tower and if the enemy team is sending their bot lane top side and there's no top tower for, to play for, then there's less objectives to play for. So inherently, the top tower is less valuable than bot tower because when Rift Herald came in and was introduced to the game, it just had more value to it. The same thing with top tower, whenever Drake was the only thing, the only objective that was relevant in the game, then uh, that was the case too, that bot tower was just less, was like, less valuable because the objectives were around that turret anyway the top tower was like the hard tower turret to break but in this case you know fanatic are just uh basing now on reckless to see what he buys just tabby ninja ninja tabby is insane here against gigabyte marines you know ninja tabby works at against every single champion here against they, it works against lulu too but that doesn't really matter but it works against ergot very well against corky very well uh, against uh, the Shadow Assassin as well, uh, crazy stuff. The the Q from Choga wasn't the best here. Well, it was. It could have been the best because, you know, what, what happened here was our Caps cancelled the Q of Levi, and then Levi had to flash, and then in the case where Levi actually queued there, then he one hundred percent would have been hit by the Choga Q. So this was like miscommunication, but this is something that you don't really communicate about. It's like. Well, how are you gonna say it in that split second? Oh, he's gonna queue over, I'm gonna queue over the wall and he's gonna do. You know, it's really, really inefficient, right? So this is just about intuition, and uh, you could argue that both plays can work out fine. But to be honest, the main thing with Kane is that when he queues over a wall, his animation, it can't be cancelled by anything. So he would have been hit by that choke queue 100%. So that would have been juicy, and then Caps could have followed up. The same thing with, uh, like, if, if Chogat Q was used instead to follow up on Syndra, it would have been better. But I think, uh, after thinking about it, I think Soaz's play is better and more guaranteed that uh, it will be a kill, in fact. But to be fair, like, Choga did, in fact, hit the silence. So they could have also just chained the normal CC. So maybe Caps' play was better. Yeah, Caps' play was better because Chogat hit the silence. Like Chogat hit the silence and you could hit Syndra E for free and then you could hit the Choga Q for free, right? So it definitely was better to do what uh, what Caps did. 5k gold need now, 4k. Uh, TP coming in from behind. Soaz is also responding. Corky is in deep trouble, deep trouble. TP is cancelled. Corky is silenced, Q is missing, stun is not landing because of the flash. Okay, so TP was cancelled now by Archie. What did he want to do from all the way here? He wanted to gank from all the way here as Ergot. So maybe in a case where Fnatic don't spot him and uh, Soaz doesn't TP, it's better. Because it's kind of a coincidence, I don't think they saw this TP. Like, they didn't, they, they for sure didn't see this TP. Let's take a step back. They didn't see the TP, and it was just a coincidence that uh, Fnatic decided to TP at the same time. But Corky was heavily out of position, like he is right now. Holy.
Wow. Okay, so they get the kill, use the Rift Herald, mid turret, second tower is very low. Caps has both summoners, doesn't need to be afraid. Kane still with no form upgrade. Now this is a sad Kane game. And uh, Rek'Sai seems to match up a lot better than some of the other tanks. I guess we've only seen Kane being played against Gragas. And uh, it seems to be doing a lot better here, uh, the Rek'Sai. In this game at least. Seems like he's also itemizing here for Shadow Assassin. Is that the upgrade he's heading towards? Is that what we should assume off of this? I think it's a fair assumption to make. I don't think you would buy armor penetration. I think you would just go for Black Cleaver if you are uh, the red one. I think the red one is a lot better here. They have a lot of damage and Black Cleaver would be a good item and then... Um, uh, the red one also deals with uh, Rek'Sai and uh, Choga quite well, I would say. Is Levi just committing? Maybe he has his upgrade already and he's just waiting for Shadow Assassin. Because him maxing W is definitely highlighting the fact that he wants to play the Assassin, the Shadow Assassin thing. Just another indicator. Okay, let's take a step back. I was kind of stuck in my imagination, but I just kind of spaced out. I was thinking, I, my stomach started to hurt, and I was thinking what I would do in a case of emergency, and if I couldn't move, and then my first initial thought was that I'm going to climb out the window, and then my second thought was that I'm going to start the stream, and then I'm going to just shout that someone should call 911. But... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I just completely spaced out and I thought I would share why. Completely useless. Let me try to recenter my focus on the game. Once again, uh, if you are watching these games separately, I need to mention the fact that I'm I'm now 23 hours awake and I just decided to stay awake for the world broadcast and just uh, do the thing. Uh, do the thing uh, and just get through it. So let's see now. So I was pushed all the way in bottom and then he roamed into mid lane. Ergot caught the wave and the wave is pushing. It's now in an even spot. Choga is uh, now a bit too deep. Like Choga is a bit too deep considering Twitch is going topside, right? So so I should pick a defensive position. He doesn't need to be here and walking up too far here is a bad thing. He doesn't need to take all this damage because of, obviously Gigabyte Marines are going to look for a fighting situation. A big problem for Gigabyte Marines is that they will have difficulties face checking things, difficulty engaging, and they are very far behind. And those are usually uh, the things you need to do when you are far behind. You need to face check and you need to engage to kind of create situations that are beneficial for you. But with their team comp right now, you know, they are going to look to scale and look to do that kind of shenanigans. But, um, you know, with the goal disadvantage and the enemy team having a very 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 fed twitch at this point in time like just compare Zaya items to twitch items Zaya is quite depressing Fnatic is doing a great job in this game and it looks like they're going to force the the kind of the situation to a 2 and 4 Caps has no ultimate I'm reckless after pushing top tower just grouping up to take an objective, nothing more for him up top lane. Twitch is now on the side lane. Caps is just taking the waves all by himself in mid lane. He's getting some assistance from from Jesses, but I don't even think he needs it because who who's who's gonna engage on him? It's just impossible, completely impossible to engage on this Caps with this team comp. Like, how do they get to him? 
Let's see if Kane manages to get a form. That could be a way. Oh, there we go. Speaking of killing caps, here it comes. Oh, <laughs> the sneaky Vicky rocket. Is this is this Nash? This could potentially be Nash for Fnatic. They could tank it for a long time without taking damage. They have to twitch for DPS. Yeah, it looks like they're heading straight to Nash. So there's no flash on Gigabyte Marines. Like I was talking about how Syndra cannot die. Sure, if the enemy team flashes after her and goes all in on this, sure, she can die. Archie has a flash. Let's see how we can use it. Roxa misses his knock-up. Not a big deal, though. <laughs> Not a big deal, though. <laughs> I just realized what I said, but everyone knows what I really meant. Yeah. Let's continue. Fnatic, like uh, Caps is trying to go into bottom, but uh, the main thing here is that he can't really take the aggressive path that he wants to take. Like looking at the vision of Fnatic, they are blind in this area, blind in this area. He wants to take a path here, he wants to go here. And uh, it's not really possible because of the blindness here. That's uh, Elton John goggles. Completely blind. Oh. And um, in this type of scenario, either he should get support from the bot side to go through here, or when the enemy team, like when the team, uh, like Fnatic, like Fnatic in their position, they should have vision here, they should have vision that supports. The walk through here for caps otherwise caps should usually take the more defensive approach which is all the way around right even though the situation ended fine usually you don't want your mid laner to die like this archie with some magic managed to uh, stop the battle which is important to highlight i thought this situation would give them a free nash but with the tp of archie up in the top wave it kind of baited fanatic away from it and archie managed to survive we have the Righteous Glory finished on our dear Urgot. And he's also built up quite the CS differential for himself. Because Soaz has been ignoring bottom to group up and to create pressure. Maybe a bit too much, but uh, it's better too much than too little. 9k gold differential and Reckless is as strong as ever. He's also quite tanky, you know, that's what makes it a bit extra crazy, is that he's quite tanky, you know, he's Ninja Tabi and he has Phantom Dancer and he's in no way, like, squishy. You know, it's, it's going to be hard for a team like Gigabyte Marines with this auto-attacking shenanigans stuff to really, really get to Twitch and really, really one-shot him, because that's kind of necessary. It's hard to do with, like, some hard CC or any tool to get back into it, but uh, Gigabyte Marines are legit, like, Full AD team, and if they're behind, they're kind of useless. It's just a stomp. I wish this game was a bit more competitive, but uh, Gigabyte Marine, their their composition leaves a lot to like leaves a lot to the desires, you know. And, uh, Fnatic are just going to take it home. They're going to make this group into a tiebreaker, it seems. Immortals match up against um, the Longzu gaming team that they have in the group is uh, also going to, like, sure, if Longzu win that game, uh, all of a sudden there's no tiebreaker and they get three points and this end the route with 3-3 uh, three, three and... Uh, that could be also like uh, it could just seal the fate right there too. All right, so Fnatic secured the Baron off of the kill on Levi. Uh, right now, like I'm trying to figure out things to talk about, but Gigabyte Marines are just going to get suffocated to death. Like they have some wave clear to work with, but. Uh, the late game they are waiting for to be a bit strong is just never gonna happen. It's just no way it's going to happen. Fnatic is just gonna take the entire enemy base. Like Reckless could just open and kill whoever he wants, but he's not happy unless he kills like two people.
cool Infernal Drake. GA as well on Twitch. <laughs> like he's super tanky. <laughs> he has so much armor. Randon's Omen is such a fantastic buy because it works against uh, the Corky as well. It's a fantastic buy in this case. Random Zoman is fantastic to buy when you see an Ash in the game, you see uh, a Yasuo in the game. Random Zoman can be very impactful. Ooh. Excuse me, excuse me. Sorry. So I was just walking in there, getting polymorphed. Q doesn't land, so it's taking a lot of damage, doesn't seem to care. Whoa, good knockup, good knockup. The game is over, game is over. Uh, it was sealed very early on. Very impressive that Fnatic's bot lane actually won the lane in this matchup. I don't think they're supposed to. Uh, I don't think they're supposed to win this matchup. And this puts Fnatic in a scenario where they are 2 4. Uh, they're looking for Long Zhu to beat Immortals. So Immortals get 6-0 and the rest of the group is 2 and 4. Crazy stuff, crazy stuff. Like, uh, they're all 2-2 against each other and uh, everyone beats each other once. It's going to come down to game time, how the tiebreakers will pan out. I think uh, uh, we will have to see. I think people, we, we will figure out how the tiebreakers are going to be played out before you see this vote anyway. So I don't need to speculate. So... Uh, we're going to head into that match. This game was, you know, looking at it, the camp on top side really worked out. Choga was very far ahead, Rexa was very far ahead. And then the fact on top of that, that Twitch, you know, Rakan got first blood with that insane CC chain uh, uh, level 1 when Choga queued into the push. Rakan getting first blood gave him the opportunity to buy Arden Sensor very early on. Arden Sensor and uh, Twitch with his Hurricane made bot lane too strong and they were already ahead and all of a sudden Fnatic have all winning matchups. Syndra just pushing the waves in mid lane and Corky can't do much about it and uh, you know that was the situation. Gigabyte Marines had very little tools to come back in the game like it was close to impossible for them to come back into uh, the game and that pretty much settled it. Uh, see you guys in the next game.